Because whenever God wanted to do something miraculous in the world to change generations, to change the epoch of time, he reached out to just one man. Oh, Dr. Archer, that can't be true. Let me prove it to you. From New Life Ministries, this is Going Deeper. With Stephen Arterburn, I'm Stephen Arterburn. And Going Deeper is all about taking the tough issues, the hard issues of life, looking a little bit deeper inside so that we can gain some insight into our lives. Well, hello, my friends. Welcome back to Going Deeper. My name is Dr. Ron Archer. Sit again for Steve Audubon. You know, this has been an interesting season for men. An interesting dispensation for men. Men are under attack in the United States. Our manhood is called toxic by many on the left. Men are being made to feel as though they are no longer needed. I know in Africa where I did some ministry, women would say, I don't need a man. I just need a baby. I'm okay by myself. And you know that this environment has caused irrecoverable damage in our lives? Do you know that 72% of black babies born in America are born out of wedlock and are raised by a single parent? Let me repeat that word. Let me repeat this, this to you. 72%, two thirds of all black children that are born in the United States are born out of wedlock and are raised by a single parent home. 55% Hispanic and 38% white. And we know through psychometric studies and research that 80% of all the social ills in these United States are a direct derivative of single parent homes. A single parent child being raised in that environment is more likely to drop out of school, more likely to abuse drugs, more likely to get pregnant as a teenager, more likely to be involved in gang activity, more likely to start being self-destructive, more likely to go to some kind of penal institution, either juvenile or adult prison, all because of a single parent home. And did you know because of how we have attacked white men in this country and saying everything is their fault, do you know what's happening in our country? These, these great men that have built this country, that wrote the Constitution, that built the great industries that we see and have, white men in America between ages 45 to 65 are committing suicide at a 30% higher rate than any other group in America. 30% higher. There's actually a study called Deaths of Despair, where there is a suicide belt for white men in America. It's the Midwest and the Rocket. And guess which state per capita has the most suicides of this group from 45 to 65? Montana. Rugged men who are being told by their own kids, I don't love you, I don't need you, I don't like you, you're this, you're that. And these men typically either threw a shotgun. There was one gentleman who was so depressed, he had a feeding tube. He took two big bottles of Jack Daniels and poured them down his tube to commit suicide. So because of that, I wrote this book called The Power of one man, to push back against all the lies of the enemy, that you are, as a man, no good, that you, as a man, are irrelevant. That is from the pit of hell, the power of one man. I, I just want you to understand, man, if, if you're a wife of a good man or a daughter of a good man or a son of a good man, make sure he gets this book. You know why? Because whenever God wanted to do something miraculous in the world to change generations, to change the epoch of time, he reached out to just one man. Oh, Dr. Archer, that can't be true. Let me prove it to you. 
When God wanted to save the world from a flood, did he call a committee? Did he call a group? He reached out to one man named Noah and said, build me an ark where there is no rain because I'm going to send a flood. And for 150 years, Noah preached and built, preached and built, preached and built, and the rains came. One man that saved all humanity as a remnant of God's creation. When God wanted to create a chosen people that he would create a new covenant with, and from this chosen people would come Jesus Christ, he reached out to one man. His name was Abraham. Abraham, leave your mother and father and go to a land you know not of. And I will bless those that bless you and curse those that curse you. And I will make your seed like the sands of the seashore or the stars of heaven. One man. When God wanted to lead the nation of Israel out of bondage for 400 years, he didn't call a committee or a group. He reached out to... One man, his name was Moses, a stutterer. And yet God said, Moses, go to Pharaoh and you say to him, let my people go. One man. When God wanted to put the tribe of Judah on the throne of Israel, he reached out to one unlikely young man. God told the prophet Samuel, go to the house of Jesse and there you will find the next king of Israel, a man after my own heart. Well, Samuel had the shofar horn with the horn of a ram. They put oil in it to anoint for godly purposes. And Jesse, the father of the house, presented to Samuel seven sons, tall, handsome, strapping, muscular, any one of them could be king, but the oil wouldn't flow. And so Samuel asked Jesse, the father, God told me the next king is in this house. Do you have another son? And Jesse couldn't believe it. He had this little runt, this little reject, this probably ADD, hyperactive kid out with the sheep. And he told him, bring him to me. And little 12-year-old David, unwanted, rejected by his own father, put out. He was so sure, Jesse, that this son could not be the king. He kicked him out. What's the lesson? Hear me today as we go deeper. Man's rejected is God selected. The Bible says Jesus came unto his own and his own received him not. If you've been rejected by a father, rejected by a mother, rejected by a spouse, you're next in line for promotion. You're next in line for a victory because man's rejected is God selected. One man who was 12 was chosen by God. When God wanted to share the gospel throughout the Gentile world, did he call a committee? He called one man on the Damascus road, Jesus said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he chose one man who was a persecutor of the church to become the greatest prolific church planter and preacher and writer of the New Testament. One man. When God wanted to save the world from sin, he became one man, Jesus. He that knew no sin became sin for us. The power of one man can change generations, can change families, can change the world. God has used mightily one man. God does not call the qualified. He qualifies who he calls. And that one man can be you. Let's go deeper. 
Thank you for joining me for Going Deeper. I hope something I've said may have helped just a little bit. If you have a question you'd like me to answer or comment, just email me at stevesocial at newlife.com. I'll see you next time. If you want to support Going Deeper with Stephen Arterburn, be sure to subscribe so you never miss another episode. And if you know someone who would benefit from this episode, be sure to share it with them. See you on the next Going Deeper with Stephen Arterburn from New Life Ministries.